Okay, so this video is for you guys that um, maybe class was cut short or you really didn't understand, so I'm going to slow it down here. Um, you should have your notes filled in right now. I'm not going to write them down, but I will go over them, so make sure you have your um, pencil handy um, and you can check your notes. So what is a linear inequality? A linear inequality is very similar to a linear equation, except now instead of an equal sign, we have an inequality symbol. That's the only difference. We solve it the same way, we set it up the same way. And hopefully you remember in class, what is the solution to a linear inequality? The solution is the region, the shaded region, um, the ordered pairs that are in that shaded region. So we could have 15 solutions, we could have 100 solutions. A line is infinitely many solutions, so it, whether it's shaded greater than or less than, um, that opens up the possibility to have a lot of solutions in a linear inequality. We went over in class um, how we determine ordered pairs or solutions. So if we look at this example, 2x minus 3y is less than 15, um, I'm just testing points and I'm seeing does 2, 5 fit this inequality? And to do that, we just plug in numbers. So my original equation is 2x minus 3y is less than 15, my linear inequality, excuse me. And I'm just going to plug in values. I know that x stands for 2. I know that y stands for 5. And I'm just going to evaluate and check it. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5. 15 is less than 15. 4 and negative 15 is negative 11. And I ask myself, is negative 11 less than 15? It is. So this 2, 5 is a solution to this linear equation. And if you go ahead and do these, you'll find out that no, this is not. No, 3, negative 4 is not. And yes, 0, 0 is a solution. So that's just how we kind of check it and determine if something is a solution to the linear inequality. Now let's talk about the steps to graphing a linear inequality. So if we go down in our notes, um, graphing linear inequalities is a way to solve all the ordered pairs that are solutions. And so in your notes, we have three easy steps that if you follow, you should be okay. Um, in step one, we're going to write the inequality in, what form do we always use? Slope, intercept to graph. And remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we're still going to get y by itself. Um, step two, when we graph the inequality, we use a dotted line for less than or greater than symbols. And I want to refresh your memory. Remember in your notes earlier on when we did inequalities, for example, we had x is greater than 4, and we graphed them on a straight line. Um, here was 0, and here's 4. When we had greater than and less than, we did an open circle. And we did an open circle because we know x is greater than 4. x isn't 4. So, number, so 4 cannot be a solution to this. That's why we used an open circle. Well, it's very similar when we use lines um, of inequalities. We use a dotted line for less than or greater than because on the dot is not part of the solution. Um, we use a solid line for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbols. And our last step is we are going to use a test point to determine which side of the line to shade. We're also going to use my little skier. And here's my little skier. And you'll remember, little skier goes up the mountain and he skis from left to right. So we're going to use a test point or we're going to use our little skier to check which side of the graph we shade on. So those are the notes. So let's go ahead and do a couple of problems together. Or I'll do them and you can do them at home. Um, so let's take a look at number one. Number one is already in y equals mx plus b form, so there's not a lot of work I need to do here. Um, I am going to locate my beginning point, or my y-intercept, is negative 5, and my slope is one-third. So now that I have those points identified, I'm going to go ahead and graph this. My beginning point's negative 5, so I'm going to start on my y-intercept at negative 5, and my slope is positive one-third, so I'm going to go up one, run three. Up one, run three. 
up one, one, run three. And I want to do enough points to where I can see the pattern. And I can reverse it to look at the left side and go down one over three, down one over three, down one over three. Now, because this is greater than, it's going to be a dotted line. So this dotted line looks like this. And of course, you have a straight edge, so you're going to use a straight edge. The line goes all the way through the quadrants, and I have arrows on both ends. That has not changed. So I have this dotted line here. Now, remember we're going to use a test point, or we can use the skier. So the skier always starts on the left-hand side. He skis from left to right. And if it's greater than, greater than means we're going to shade above the skier. So greater than means we're going to shade above. So I would shade all this region. I'm shading above the line. If y were less than, we would shade below the skier. So greater than, we shade above the skier. Less than, we shade below the skier. We also said in our notes that we're going to use a test point. And the easiest test point to use is 0, 0, right? Because it's really easy to plug in zeros. So if I do that, um, well, I'll do that in a second, but let's talk. This shaded region, this means all of these points in here are solutions to this inequality. This is a solution, this is a solution, this is a solution. All of these in here are solutions to this inequality. What if I had this point right here that's right on the dotted line? Is this a solution to the inequality? No, it's not. Because it's saying that y is greater than. Because this is a dotted line, the points on this line, it's like your open circle. It's not a part of the solution. It's everything greater than that. So in this case, this is not a solution to the inequality. So now I'm going to use my test point, and I have 0, 0. So y is 0, is greater than 1 third times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So I ask myself, is 0 greater than negative 5? It is. And it lies within that shaded region. So I'm going to shade where that region is. So you have two ways you can shade your regions, okay? All right. One more that we're going to do together, and we're going to take a look at number three. All right, so number three. First thing, it's not in slope-intercept form, so that's going to be my first goal here. Remember, quick lesson in inequalities, and you can always go back in your journal to make sure you're getting it right. Um, but we need to get y by itself, so I'm going to use additive inverse, subtract 5x on both sides. I get negative 2y is greater than negative 5x plus 12. Remember your rule of inequalities. If your coefficient is negative and you're dividing by a negative coefficient, you've got to switch the sign. This is when we flipped out. So what I do is I just change it to positive and I'm going to flip out. I flip my y's, I flip my sign, I flip my x, I flip my constant term, and everything's opposite. It's the same thing as multiplying by negative 1. All right, so now to get y by itself, I'm just going to divide everything by 2 and I get y is less than 5 halves x minus 6. So now, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this so you can pause and go back if you want your notes to match, but I'm just going to give myself some room. So now I can graph this. I know that my beginning point is negative 6, and I know that my slope is 5 halves. So my beginning point is negative 6, and my slope is 5 halves. So I'm going to go up 5 over 2, up 5, over 2. Up 5, over 2. I see the pattern. Is it going to be solid or a dotted line? Because it's less than, it's a dotted line. Go all the way through the quadrants, arrows on both ends. Here's my skier, okay? And it's less than, so that means I'm going to shade below where the skier is. So I'm shading all over here. So all of this represents solutions to my inequality. I'm also going to use a test point. So in this case, I'm still going to use 0, 0 because it's easy. But if I use 0, 0, 0, 0 should not be a solution because all my solutions are over here. So let's check it. Let's see what happens when we plug in 0, 0. Well, if I get a 0 minus a 0, is 0 greater than 12? 0 is not greater than 12. And notice, 0 is not a part of that solution. So I've shaded correctly. Try a couple of these on your own, and if you're still not understanding, come in and see me during tutoring, okay? Good luck.